Hello and welcome to February 2023's Plan With Me. I hope you have a cup of tea or coffee and you're ready to get started. I suggest if you do have a candle, light it. Don't be like me. Don't leave it unlit for your entire art journey. Light the candle. Your life will be better for it. I needed this month's theme to be quick, easy, but beautiful. Because if I'm totally honest, I was feeling lazy and did not want to paint anything elaborate. This is where washi tape can, came in handy. I had this stunning turquoise and gold set in my stash, which was just perfect. I decided that I would use a wet on wet technique with watercolors to complement the washi tape, which would feature throughout the spreads. I used a combination of Viridian and Indian Yellow to get the green-blue colour, Prussian Blue, Cobalt Blue and Viridian to get the blue colour, Violet and Permanent Rose to bring in subtle hints of pink and purple to match the flowers in the tape. But the cherry on top is the sparkle I was able to create by adding a few drops of yellow gold metallic paint. As I set that aside to dry, I was a bit nervous to go full on wet on wet in my bullet journal because the paper in these journals are not meant to be used with lots of water. However, I was pleasantly surprised at how well the paper in this journal held up to the watercolour, with very little warping and no bleed through at all. The journal I am using is from a lovely shop in Poland, which I will link below along with my other supplies. The quote I chose for this month is Blossom by Blossom, the Spring Begins. This quote has many meanings for me this month and is a reminder to myself that there is always hope and that spring always comes after a winter. And on that cliched note, I'd like to thank you for coming to my TED Talk. that I am using double-sided tape to stick the watercolour paper into the journal. I have noticed that because the watercolour paper is so thick, normal glue stick does not work as well, so I highly recommend double-sided tape for this. I am a sucker for Dutch doors and little cutouts in my journal, and I knew that I wanted a little moment where the washi tape shone through from the next page. So I cut out a little wavy strip, which worked out well. One tip I would say is pre-plan your cutouts. I did not give much thought to the left hand side would look like on the next page. Luckily it worked out this time, but I have not been so lucky in the past. And with that, the cover page is done. I absolutely love how pretty and sparkly it came out. The next spread is my monthly calendar planning spread. Here I always create a giant calendar so that I can see at a monthly glance what I have on and plan out my time accordingly. And this is also where your annual calendar view comes in handy to ensure that you're setting up the month correctly and to carry over any important events once the page is set up. In case you were wondering, the size of each block in the calendar is 7 dots by 9 dots. I could have done with a little bit more space, but cutting the Dutch door meant that I had lost a little bit of space. Oh, that was one thing that I forgot to mention. This year, I'm using a B5 size notebook, which I have found to be an absolute treasure in terms of space for planning. 
Over the last few years, I have found myself really struggling to create pretty journal spreads, which have the space I need for day-to-day -day planning. It's really important for me to have a pretty place to write and plan. I don't like writing in plain notebooks, as they feel so uninspiring. I always feel more motivated and excited when using my bullet journal for day-to-day -day planning. While I normally use my work's digital calendar to keep track of meetings and events, having a place to track personal events and meetings and work-related project milestones has been super useful to me. And I'm finding that this slightly larger notebook is giving me the opportunity to create something pretty, but still afford me the space I need for planning. I decided to add a little quote about planning into the dead space at the bottom of the calendar and cut out a little piece of washi tape to fill the space. I'm not sure that worked out too well, to be honest. Using the same paint mixtures as before, along with a few dots of the fabulous gold paint, I created a little background for the headings and days of the week, which helped to tie the spread in with the washi tape down the right side. All the headlines are written using a Posca gold paint pen, which is my new favorite pen. I want to write everything in gold. As a final piece to the puzzle, I decided to line the wavy edge of the page with gold and that really just helped to finish off the page. And just like that, the calendar spread is done. An important part of keeping myself accountable and reaching my yearly goals is creating a monthly and daily action plan. This plan is targeted towards a goal which I have set at the beginning of the year, essentially breaking it down into bite-sized achievable chunks. I use my monthly goals and habit tracking page to monitor this progress. The goals outline the three or four big goals that I want to achieve this month and the habits are the small daily or weekly steps I want to implement to help me reach these goals. Many mistakes were made during the making of this page but one thing that I love about bullet journaling is that it really doesn't matter and that no one mistake is not fixable and if it really isn't fixable an example of this coming up in a moment, then embrace it. Life is messy and that is okay sometimes too. I decided to use a slightly different layout for my habits this month. Instead of writing out lots of little calendars, I did mention I was lazy, right? I created a chart with the days of the month at the top and the habits down the side. It is important to note though that this might not be possible if... And finally, 
the nuts and bolts of any planner is the daily planning spread. As I said, I was feeling really lazy and I wanted the washi tape to do all the work for me. So I sliced down the sides of the pages to create a little journal within a journal effect for my daily spreads. I added little tabs to each page and painted each tab in that fabulous gold paint so that it would stand out against the washi tape. Did you notice that I made another mistake there and did not cut out the tab for the first week? Don't worry, I go back and fix that in the end. I mixed some more watercolour paint in the same ratios as before to paint the blocks for each day of the week. I actually find writing over watercolour quite pretty in my journal, so I like this effect. The blocks are not perfect and I purposefully went out of the lines a little bit when painting these. This creates a perfectly imperfect look when I go back and outline each block with the gold Posca pen. As you know, there are seven days in a week, but for symmetry I had created eight blocks. I decided to add a stamped flower to this block. Although I have some space for notes down the left hand side, a kind of brain dump site if you will, if I need week specific notes, I will write these over the gold stamp. And this is me trying to decide how I'm going to attach that left out gold tab to the page. I decided to stick it down with some thin washi tape, so which I added to the right hand side to hold the tab and then needed to add it to the left hand side to balance it out. All in all, it really came out well and I'm actually really happy with the effect of this final page. And that brings us to the end of February setup. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope that the gold and the sparkles bring you as much joy as they do me. I can't wait to use this through the month of February. I know I'm going to love every day when I open my journal to fill it in. Happy planning and we'll see you next month. Oh, just popping right back in here. You thought I had disappeared, hadn't you? Just a reminder to please like and subscribe to this video. Cheers!